Hello my soccer universe. I literally just stopped watching uh, Napoli against Inter. So we have Monday night games uh, that were in there and I decided now yeah it's time to make a big roundup for what happened this weekend and to be honest um, it was a weekend of two leagues for me actually three if you count the NFL but it's not soccer and we're only talking about soccer on this channel for now although I would love to talk about other things that are happening as well I gotta be honest about that too in any case, it was actually a really nice schedule. I decided to forego all the FA Cup action. I saw a little bit of uh, Chelsea playing at home, I think it was against Middlesbrough, uh, with, because I wanted to see the nice new Chelsea jersey, but I was actually more focused on the La Liga game. That was really, really, really interesting, I have to say. Um, and I also saw, I put the Merseyside Derby on, um, yeah, what can I say? The boys win against the men. Um, wonderful, wonderful goal though. Uh, to win it all, Angelotti will probably not be very uh, enamored with uh, what Everton was showing. We probably should have uh, taken the lead in the first half, but in the second half they were outclassed by Liverpool. So that's what I saw from the FA Cup and we leave it at there. As I said, later rounds we'll get into it. So. It was more or less Friday, Saturday. I could watch La Liga. It was quite nice. Uh, Sunday, yes, it was between uh, La Liga and uh, Serie A, with the focus shifting slightly to Serie A. But there was the NFL playoffs that I really uh, was watching quite attentively. And Monday was all Serie A, so uh, that's how we're going to go through. And then I will add on a little bit of uh, Portugal and Greece, because there was quite some action too that we can add on. Let's start in La Liga, as I said. Um, I actually saw uh, parts of both games on Friday uh, evening. Ravadu Valladolid against Leganes. Leganes actually having the bet of the first half and having a deserved lead. Uh, and it was one of the <laughs> few, not, uh, there were, uh, were quite a uh, few uh, really crazy jersey matchups. This one I count in there with the purple white against the uh, two-tone green jerseys, but yeah, Leganes had a 2-1 lead. Uh, however, in the second half, and that's what I saw, Real Valladolid really, really had chances and eventually got the equalizer, make it 2-2. I was all geared up for uh, Sevilla against Athletic uh, Bilbao, and yeah, it was also a match of kind of uh, two halves, and again, I don't like those Sevilla jerseys, I think they, they just... Uh, those are the most basic Nike jerseys, they're not befitting of a great club like Sevilla. Uh, however, the Bilbao away jerseys in green, uh, yeah, I don't like necessarily green jerseys, but this one looks really, 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 really nice. And Athletic Bilbao in a overall rather, I don't want to say dull, but very tactical game. It was not the exciting game that the names kind of promised, but if you know how the teams were playing this season so far, I think it was not un un unexpected. Bilbao takes the lead and actually had chances to make it uh, even more uh, convincing, but then in the second half Sevilla comes back uh, through an own goal, gets the equalizer. I think they could have gotten a winner later on, but I think the 1-1 one -one was fair. Uh, Saturday I did not see Valencia against Eibar. I We were working a lot in the girls' room, so I had the uh, Getafe Real Madrid game on, but I it couldn't see much. I I think I started somewhere in the 20, 25th minute when Getafe actually had the better of the game, but then Varan oh, kind of Real Madrid clinically, and if the strikers don't convert, needs to be the central defender. Varan gets the 1 0, he also gets the 2 0. Uh, in the second half, so two goals by a central defender, 53rd, and Modric uh, in stoppage time makes it 3 0. Uh, one of those clinical wins, and at that moment I thought, hmm, Real Madrid, they're now top of the table, let's see. Uh, they also uh, did a lot for their goal difference. So let's see if uh, Barcelona can live up. Atletico Madrid against Levante gets a very workmanlike win. Uh, they get uh, it was like great first 15 minutes and then a uh, stale rest of the game. Um, Atletico Madrid took the lead through Korea in the 13th. Then Marty uh, just a little bit later uh, equalized, and then Felipe in the 18th um, 
gets makes it two ones of great 20 minutes um, and then Atletico Madrid can hang on to the win and then finally the Barcelona derby top against bottom and I was at the beginning of the game talking to my brother who is a big Barcelona fan I said yeah Barcelona is eventually gonna score mm, it was not that straightforward Barcelona with a really really weird showing I have to say this uh, reminded me a lot about the game against the Real Sociedad except that Espanyol is not a Real Sociedad Barcelona playing in their um, yeah, uh, flag jerseys which I have to say are nicer than uh, previous ones. There is something nice about them, I have to say. Uh, especially, you know, since there's the brush stroke and the legend is that the Catalan flag was made because uh, one uh, king put his hand in a wound and then over. Anyway, I thought that Espanyol, uh, under the new coach Al Belar, really, really... Um, could hold Barcelona well at bay and it was a very timid showing of Barcelona at first and when David Lopez got the lead for Espanyol it was quite well deserved it was like five minutes after I hung up with my brother or something, something I said oh yeah there I was going wrong and it took Barcelona quite a while until they could get going yes they didn't have the better chances towards the end of the half but Espanyol had a very deserved 1-0 uh, lead over, Bar over the big Barcelona at the half and then in typical Barcelona fashion uh, I don't want to say out of nowhere because they had chances especially Suarez um, I think he hit the post in the first half already out of short range um, really uh, then took over the game and it was Suarez and uh, Vidal who came on who actually then turned the game around Suarez with a really nice uh, individual effort, uh, effort after a nice uh, Alba assist uh, gets the 1-1 one -one. was not an easy cross and then wonderful assist to make it 2-1 uh, for Barcelona in the 59th Vidal who actually as, as far as I the last thing I heard is that he's suing the club and now he's scoring yeah it's 2-1 for Barcelona, do you think? Yeah, they pulled this one out of the head again, out of nowhere. And especially with Messi honestly having a very pedestrian game. Uh, according to his standards, it was an awful game by Messi, uh, I have to say. So, I honestly, I think he was pretty much worth um, taking off at, at, at one point. And then was one crack in the game when Frankie de Jong within like 10 minutes gets two yellow cards, especially the second yellow card. Yes, he is. Um, I can't un understand why he's pulling down the Barcelona, uh, the Espanol attacker, but on the other side, <clears throat> you are on a yellow. Don't get yourself sent off. And then I think he, uh, um, Valverde may, may, may made a mistake instead of. You know, you were playing 4-4-2 four, four, uh, four, four, almost, or maybe 4-3-3, three, three, something like that. And now, instead of uh, pulling Griezmann, I mean, he pulled back Griezmann into midfield, but then he left Suarez and Messi on the front. And the problem there was that uh, both do not work defensively. And especially Messi was not good on this day he was basically he was ripe for taking off i would have taken uh messi off um and uh, not griezmann as 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 he did then later um and put some meter on and leave suarez in there and don't have a four three two shape that was so but but make it really four four one something like that to have a little bit more defensive shape uh at that point uh Espanyol created chances and Wu Lei came on and gets the equalizer and was more than deserved, I have to say. To finish out the round, um, Granada beat uh, Mallorca 1-0 and then I saw Real Sociedad against Villarreal, which was, I think at that point, uh, already the second game of blue-white against yellow. We had Espanyol Barcelona and then Real Sociedad Villarreal, we have another one coming um, in Italy. Rasasa played wonderful in the first half and had a nice 1 0 lead, all but deserved. Uh, 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 it, it, no, I'm saying it was really a deserved lead, maybe, maybe, maybe true, more, but Villarreal gets themselves back into the game and get a penalty after a lot of reviews and, and, and so on, but it was pretty clear pen penalty. So it is 1 1, and then with a nice individual effort, Santi Casora, again, 
when I say individual effort, I mean it was nicely played, nice game, game position. There were uh, players in offside. It was really nice, nice done, and he puts it uh, in. It's initially waved offside, but um, the referee checks it, and Casola would have overtaken it. No, it stood, and it's 2 1 for Villarreal out of almost nowhere, you want to say. Real that couldn't find a way back into the game. Alaves then plays 1 1 against Betis and Celtic 1 1 against Osasuna. And so we, if we look now at the table, we still have Barcelona in first place. And this, you know, it's baffling. They play horrible. They still manage to stay in first place ahead of Real Madrid. And you gotta say, my Barcelona probably has no trouble scoring. Uh, but Real Madrid has no uh, trouble in having clean sheets, so it's kind of they are on opposite ends of the spectrum. But both now with 40 points each. Um, we have Atletico and Sevilla also level on points, 35 each. Uh, it seems like a tours race, but you don't. I think the Real Madrid is still the better team, but they don't get the results at the moment. And then we have again two tight teams, Real Sociedad and Valencia, Getafe rounds it out, Atletic. Club Villarreal in the behind Granada probably steadying the ship uh, again. Uh, Levante Osasuna, Real Betis, yeah, I think those are all safe. I think we can say Real Valladolid is maybe the first team that has to be a little bit worried with 24, uh, 21 points. Alaves, Eibar, Celta here, it's where it's really good. Celta, Mallorca, Leganes, and Espanol. Espanol got a point, maybe this lifts them up. Let's go to Italy. I saw actually less of Serie A in a way. Um, Brescia, Lazio. I mean, I'm very Lazio because Lazio continues a very remarkable run, I think. So it was the 11th game in a row where they scored at least two goals. And this is a record not uh, achieved since I think the 40s when the Grande Torino side did that. So take that. Um, Balotelli. With and I keep saying this great individual effort, but it was really nicely done how he and coolly finished how he gets the one lead for Brescia. But um, late in the sec in the first half, after again, and uh, despite me wearing Lazio, I'm wearing because the team is playing well, the fans again abused Balotelli um, racially, game needed need to be stopped. It's a real sore spot, but um, the game turned late in the first half when a uh, penalty was given and Chistana gets a second yellow card, maybe straight red, I, it was not clear to me, and the penalty is awarded. Uh, you know, it was one of those, he's wrapping his hand around um, a Caicedo, and of course Caicedo uses this to fall, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty clear penalty, Immobile steps up, makes it 1-1. One, one. And then pressure with 10 men can defend quite well for the longest of times and in stoppage time Immobile gets his foot, uh, gets his chance and takes a shot that goes past all the players inside uh, into the net and Lazio gets another win. I think it's seven in a row now for Lazio which is pretty pretty impressive and they put themselves kind of into the title. Uh, race, uh, you gotta say. So uh, we have to see where this is ending. Then, uh, as I said, blue white against a uh, yellow, Spala against Hellas, kind of a local derby. Hellas getting uh, the win with two nil. I saw a little bit, and I have have to say that Hellas was overall a little bit more. Um, I don't want to say more more experienced, but you know you could see that they are a little bit more. Um, cold-blooded in their attacks. Um, the old guy Pazzini getting uh, the first goal and Stepinski in the 85th uh, seals it for Hellas. Gena with a rare win over Sassuolo, kind of surprising. And then Roma-Torino was also one of those games where uh, Roma, you know, Torino started up brightly, but Roma then could get control of the game. But uh, Belotti, in typically striker fashion, just on the stroke of halftime slams one into the net and makes it 1-0 for Torino and at that point you kind of expect Roma to come out storming. They did but not with much effort and then when um, a handball was given on uh, Chris Smalling where I have to say he doesn't know where, 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 where the ball is but he stretches out the, the hand and it goes on. Um, the ball goes to, to the hand so in that sense it is a penalty a little bit, but yeah, uh, below the steps, I was make mix 2 0. There was no coming back for Roma 
from that one. Again, I was more focused on the Saints playing the Vikings, but that's um, as much as I got from it. Uh, today, Monday, and I know this uh, video is probably not posting before Wednesday. Let's see. Bologna Fiorentina didn't see much of it, ends 1 1. Um, I then was all geared up for the big Slatan show, and uh, Slatan, of course, did not start. Uh, but I have to say, you could see the um, uh, marketing department working. Slatan is playing his first game. Which shirt is selling worst in of ours? Well, the black shirt, which we haven't uh, worn this, uh, this season. Let's play in black. If Slatan scores, we sell a lot of black jerseys. <laughs> I knew from that moment, moment on that it's not, it's not going to go well. Anyway, uh, let's talk about the game. I had the same time in the first half. I had Atalanta against Parma on, but at the halftime it was already 3-0 for Atalanta with Papo Gomez scoring a great goal for Oila and Gosens adding two more before the half. And it was just pure massacre on Parma, who I had a feeling were not that badly in the game, uh, at least for the first 20 to 30 minutes. I mean, again, my focus was on me and some, 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 some totally stupid me, and I put that game on because I expected goals. They came. But yeah, Ilicic adds two more in the second half. It's 5 0, and this is the second 5 0. Atalanta ends the year as they begun, uh, begins the year as they ended the last one with 5 0 defeats of their opponents. So yeah, that was the first half, then I switched over to another game, which we'll talk later. Milan Sampdoria, what was, can I say? Milan, yes, you can see confidence is lacking. Uh, they are uh, controlling the pace uh, most of the time. Uh, and it's not the slow game anymore, but you can see that um, going forward they're always looking for the easier than the more dangerous pass. They're having chances. I mean, there were uh, Hernandez. I think um, had a good one. There was once a, I think it was a corner, 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 corner kick going to the short short post where Abiantek just couldn't get there. Suso with a glorious chance alone in front of the goalkeeper. He just wants to make it too pretty instead uh, because the first time he just moved the shot frustrating. Suzo was awful. As in a way, I mean, Jalanoglu was working more, but I always had to think Jalanoglu could do so much more. He could be a real number 10, um, kind of orchestrating everything, but he, he always plays the easy pass, so he has good stats, but he, and he is valuable to the team, but he could do so much more. I mean, uh, those two are the most frustrating, because I expect him to be the best players. And they're not, by far not, uh, at least offensively. Defensively, Hernandez, I think, was pretty good. Donnarumma had some outstanding uh, mo moments, and also Romagnoli was okay. But the longer the game went on, I mean, Milan having good chance in the first half, but I think uh, the last 15 minutes or so, uh, it was then Sampdoria who got more dangerous, who could exploit, especially the... Um, uh, weaknesses on the um, uh, right side of uh, Milan, and they almost scored, but it was given for 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 version offside. So it's nil nil at the half, and everyone Slatan, 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 and Slatan is coming come on the fifty fifth. And um, I have to say, I was hoping for a debut like he usually uses, where he scores, he comes on, does something spectacular. But you could see he just arrived at the team. He. I don't want to say he wasn't fit, but his movement, whenever he got the ball, he quickly flicked it on. Uh, I would have expected sometimes he just takes the ball and goes for it and just doesn't pass it. At the same time, Leo comes on. And the problem there was that I think Leo was hellbent on stealing Slatan's show in, in a way, because there was one chance um, midway through the second half where Slatan was, was in a better position. However, at that point, it should have been already 1-0 for Sampdoria. Uh, the defensive errors by Milan were oh, robbing my breath, on the, on, honestly. Uh, I really like that we have Benas, that Benasser is there. But he, again, he's so unlucky. He almost assisted the goal by Gal Gabertini and the second one. Also, I mean, 
if Sampdoria got a big chance, it was usually self-inflicted and it once took a really good challenge by uh, Theo Hernandez and another time great uh, position of play by Donnarumma where he was far out, out of the goal to uh, prevent another goal and then Gabbiadini uh, was kind of pushed far out left so that he couldn't get the shot to go but I think Sampdoria could have easily had the lead. Then Milan had chances, yes Slatan had probably two uh, chances to make a goal, but I think once the 80th hit, I thought, oh, this is gonna be a nil nil. I, th I didn't believe in it anymore, and that's exactly how it ended. Kind of anticlimactic. Nothing but anticlimactic was I watched the sec I had the second half on of Juve against Cagliari, and why is Cagliari playing in those horrible jerseys? Nah. Um, and as soon as I turned, turned down, Ronaldo made it already 1 nil for uh, Juventus. Uh, was again a defensive error, but he put it nicely in. And I was laughing because I saw his haircut. He again had this little, my, I want to call it hippo tail, uh, kind of copying uh, Ibrahim, which is just Ibrahim, which has longer hair. So well, that was kind of, kind of funny. You would then get the penalty. Cristiano steps up, makes it 2 0. Uh, once Igoinu comes on, he, uh, Cristiano assists Igoin to make it 3 0. And a minute later, he completes his hat trick. And yes, uh, about a month ago, I said that Cristiano does, does look right. He is back in awesome form. There really seems to have been an injury. Uh, I'm happy. Honestly, I didn't want to see him flame out like that. Um, probably he shouldn't have played most of the times, but now he really looks like he's the linchpin in the Juve attack. He scores a hat-trick and he has now ha scored hat-tricks in three different leagues. So it's a hat-trick of hat-tricks, if you want, for United, for Madrid and for Juventus. You were running away for nil winners. And then Udine... I did not see the goal, but the Paul scores late for Udine against Lecce. I saw a little bit of second half where I remember one uh, a really huge chance for Udine. The goalkeeper uh, get, just got into it. It needs to be a goal at that point. But yeah, that one ended. 1-0 one for, for Udine also. Rare win for them and will give them some cushion. And then a the big game was Napoli against Inter, which I just finished watching now. Since the video is going, it has has been a while. Oh, Napoli at the beginning did not look good and more or less shot themselves in the foot by allowing many chances. I mean, Lukaku could have already scored in the third minute. It was ruled out for offsides, but then uh, what? They were count on a called on the counter attack. I think in the fifteenth minute or so, where Lukaku gets the ball around the midfield. Uh, he's crossing with Martinez. And no Napoli defender is really getting to him, and he takes a shot from out uh, or the edge of the box, and it goes in. One nil. Uh, I mean, impressive. And I have to say, I really like Lukaku. And I actually have to say, I don't like to admit it, but this Inter team, there are players like Lukaku in there. I also like Sensi and Barella. Um, there is something in this Inter team that is nice to watch. Of course, there are other other players in there that I couldn't care less about to be honest but yeah it was the Lukaku show because in the 33rd he takes all again again a shot but um, not very well defended at once and then uh, doing merit gets the shot pushes it between his legs into the net uh, yeah but Lukaku gets it and then Napoli showing a, re a, a response gets the crowd behind them and I have to say yeah um, Hamdanovic also makes a similar, uh, almost makes a similar mistake as Merit and puts a, sh a shot of Insigne almost in his own goal, but he gets it. Uh, Napoli then um, gets the um, uh, goal, make it one, two, three, milling a third, ninth, and the crowd was really in there. And Napoli really showed some spirit at that point. The second half begins as you want, would expect, uh, with Napoli really trying to get the equalizer. However, they all put to bed when Manolas tries to uh, defend fancily ahead of Martinez, uh, cross from Vecino in. He wants to clear with his back heel right to Martinez and he makes it 3-1. Uh, 
Yes, there was a free kick of Insigne onto the um, crossbar. Yes, there were chances, but not the big chances anymore. It was more like that uh, you could feel that Napoli is not very attuned to each other, which is so weird. Uh, there were people in good possession, uh, in good position where they couldn't get the ball to and all kinds of very much rem reminiscent of Milan. And so it ends for 3-1 with for Inter who remain top of the table thanks to goal difference. 45 points uh, with Juve. Lazio with a game in hand. Uh, it's not six points behind, but they have a game in hand, so it's uh, probably only three points. Roma, 35, loses a little bit of ground. And Atalanta is there, and Atalanta won't go away. I think Atalanta might as well go into fourth place. Uh, Cagliari, um, yeah, is losing ground now. They have now a home game against Milan, which probably they will win. But yeah. Parma also is uh, now with negative goal difference and Napoli 24 points, uh, 6 wins, 6 draws, 6 losses. They are just an average team. Torino 24, Bologna 23, Hellas 22, Milan drops another spot. And if they would have beaten um, uh, Sampdoria today, they at least would have drawn level, level with Napoli. I mean, the goal difference thanks to Atalanta is not great, but... That would have been something, but yeah, instead of gaining a spot, you lose a spot. Udine now moves up uh, 21 points, and I think now we're getting slowly relegation zone. I mean, Sassuolo, Fiorentina probably have a cushion, but Sampdoria, Lecce, Brescia, Genoa, Spal, those are the ones on the bottom. Well, I haven't talked a lot already, but let's quickly look at the results in Portugal, where... Um, the big game was, of course, Sporting losing at home 2-1 to Porto. I just saw very, very, li very little of it. As I said, it was a NFL playoffs. Uh, Benfica gets a 1-0 win at Guimaraes. Braga completely destroys Belenenses. And Family Cow gets a win, 3-0. So in the table, it remains Benfica four points ahead of Porto. Family Cow hangs in there and is ahead of Sporting. And then is Guimaraes and Braga with 21 points each on top of the table. Huge results also in Greece. Well, not necessarily ones that I liked. Uh, we had the two derbies. Aris beating Pauk 4-2. Pauk is not unbeaten anymore. And I have to say, Pauk took a lead. They scored the last goal, but Ari scores four in the middle. I didn't like that happening. Um, and then Olympiakos gets a win over Pantanaikos, just 1-0. And now it's Olympiakos, one point ahead of Pauk. It's still a super tight race and probably will all come down to the final uh, matchup. Me, 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 between Pauk and Olymp Olympiakos, but uh, that's lost in a derby. Must hurt a lot. Ike gets a win over Panaitolikos. Um... And sits now in third uh, spot. Crete losing, uh, UFI losing a little bit ground. And if you look at the table, the Japan and Nikos is only an average team at the moment. So it's Olympiakos, Edef Pauk, then Aik. Those have been the three best teams over the last few years. And, and, and anyway, then Aris is there. And as I said, UFI and Xanti are a little bit dropping. They have been higher up in the table as of late. Well, that was that, my summary of match days in La Liga and in Serie A. I thought it would be a short video. Nope, it's anything. But let me know what you watched, whether you agree with my assessments. Um, again, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment below, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.